That was a nice move by Pipkins, taking it right to the rack himself. Wide open three, left wing, and it's good. Nylon, the dunk likes that, Matt. That kid, a three from the right side, and it's good. The one, Pipkins, go man, get a. Hello, and welcome to the Flex. I'm Matt St. Jean. And this is Joe Howie. And we're back with another preview episode. Friars on short rest. We're on short rest, so we're going to keep this short. Not take up too much of your time. And we're going to fill you in on what you need to know as Providence plays at Marquette. Friars 7 and 5. Marquette 6 and 6. Friars are one game up on Marquette in the Big East. Marquette is 54th in Ken Palm. Providence is 58th. A lot of the rankings, these two teams are listed in very similar spots. Joe, so let's head to the starting five. We're going to start number one with the Friars. Have, they've had two tough losses in a row. What's next? What comes next for this team? Yeah, so I talked about it a lot over the past few uh, podcasts, but we're in the gauntlet of the Big East right now. It's uh, ranked opponents and road games. It's a lot of high-pressure games, a lot of resume-building games. Um, I mean, right now, the Friars, we lost our last two games at home against Creighton on the road at Xavier by a combined a whopping three points. All three points coming right at the buzzer. Ed Cooley said it in the postgame presser. We keep losing at the, and he said, effing, E-F-F-I-N-G, buzzer. So, late game execution defensively, you know, we need to step that up because if you have the opportunity to beat ranked teams and quality Big East opponents, you got to play defense late in the game to seal victories. That's just what it comes down to. This is another opportunity for a, a quality upper level Big East opponent and another opportunity for a road game in a very tough conference. So this is becoming a must win. Yes, it is. This will be a big game. I will say, even though the Friars lost the last two, they've actually moved up two spots on Ken Palm over that stretch. So not the worst losses in the world if you're still moving up, but blown opportunities. The Friars will have one here at Marquette. Let's head to number two, Golden Eagles. What's going on with them? Um, yes, yeah, so I really, I couldn't tell you, Matt, they, um, it's a tale of two teams because Marquette started the season hot, um, money, many would say they were hot, they beat fourth ranked Wisconsin uh, on a nice tip in buzzer beater, they beat ranked Creighton by, I think it was four points, they, they, they look to be a, a, a solid NCAA tournament team, and now over their past five games, they've gone one and four, their sole win coming over, Georgetown, who, by the way, was leading them by 18 points in the first half. So it wasn't like they beat them handily. They had to come back and they won it in the final minutes of the second half at Georgetown. So that could have easily been a five-game skid for Marquette. But I don't really know what's going on with them. I think this goes back to what we said in our preseason preview with coaching. I think we're starting to see uh, Steve Wojciechowski's offensive system collapse a little bit, which, you know, when you lose – a player like Marcus Howard who touched the ball on every single possession and was shooting every single possession, you're going to see a hit. So I just think, um, you know, they're going through an adjustment right now. They they need to try and find themselves. This is a team that certainly kind of lost its identity at the end of last season and has struggled to pick up a new one this year. Lots of talent, lots of good pieces, but the puzzle has not come together. Very inconsistent. Move down to number three. I want to come back to the Friars. And the star of the show. We have not talked enough about him. David Duke. He had 30 points. Again, Xavier. Second 30-point game of his career. Where does he stand in the Big East Player of the Year race? Yeah, Matt. I, I think you and I, we, we like to give the other players on the team the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we, we like to talk about everyone. Specifically, we like to talk a lot about Nate Watson, Bynum, Reeves. I mean, really everyone. We talk about Duke, but not enough after a 30-point victory, you can't help it. Uh, not victory, but excuse me. Definitely not a victory. After a 30-point I, I, I wish it was a victory. After a 30-point showing, we got to talk about him. And we have to talk about Big East Player of the Year aspirations. I personally think he's being a little overshadowed by Marcus Zagorowski, Colin Gillespie, and Mamu. I mean, those guys are all good, and that's no disrespect, especially to Zagorowski and Mamu, who I think are serious contenders. 
Gillespie, I don't think, has the stat line for it. I mean, I get it. He's on Villanova, and they're going to give him the nod because he wears the V. But I, I think out of the three of those, Zagorowski's the biggest c- competitor for Duke. He is on fire right now. He has scored in double figures in every game that he's played. And aside from scoring, his assist numbers have gone up. His defensive efficiency is off the charts, and his rebounding has improved. He's six foot six. He's a great combo guard. He definitely has NBA aspirations. He needs to be in the conversation for Big East Player of the Year, and I don't think he's getting the national recognition recognition that he deserves right now. I think he's starting to get there. Uh, Zegarowski is a guy I'm looking on Ken Palm right now. Biggest preseason player of the year. He's not in the top five players in the conference per Ken Palm. That actually has Duke as fourth right now behind Mamu, who's at third. He's got Jeremiah Robinson Earl at one. And the guy we have not talked a lot about on here, but we will at, at some point, James Booknight for UConn, yep. who's had a fantastic season. And Gillespie is at fifth, right behind Duke. So uh, yeah, he, sh- he needs to be in that conversation with what he has done this year, the way he's added to his game. Excellent three-point shooter. He could take it to the rack, and he plays excellent defense. He has been fantastic. You want to talk about player of the year, we'll go down to number four, look at Marquette. They lost a Big East player of the year in Marcus Howard. How are they making up for it? Yeah, man. So actually, you know, we're ki- we were kind of down on Marquette in our, our second point in the starting five. We were talking about how they're on a little bit of a skid and a, in a little bit of a lull. But statistically speaking, they have a very well-rounded approach. I mean, you've got four guys that are scoring in double figures. I mean, Dawson Garcia has been a, a really nice piece for this Marquette offense, averaging 13-7. and seven. Uh, I, The stats don't really tell the story here. I mean... They're losing games, but they're playing well, and I think this is the most well-rounded approach that we've seen from a Wojciechowski t- uh, team since the days of Andrew Rousey. Yeah, they, they got a lot of guys that can do it. I think they're bolstered a little bit by that strong strong start in the non-conference. I think some of these numbers get artificially bumped up a little bit, but four guys averaging double figures, Garcia, McHugh, and Carton, and Kane. Four good players right there. Yeah, and then... If we're going to talk about Marquette players, we have to talk about the big boy, Theo John. He, um, the one and only. He has, uh, to to give him legitimate credit, he has definitely improved. Um, I mean, he, instead of averaging five points a game and five rebounds, he's now averaging eight points a game and 5.7 rebounds. So uh, <laughs> a, little, a little tip of the hat to you, Theo. Some uh, development he still goal there. tends a lot. But... Um, uh, on a more serious note, he actually – I was watching their game against UConn, and it's, he reminds me of a sophomore Nate Watson where you just consi- – where he just consistently pounds that right hook in the paint. It, it almost looks like he probably watched Nate Watson's sophomore film and tried to structure his game around <laughs> that because it, that's exactly what he looks like. But thankfully for us, Nate Watson is a senior now and has improved his game so much. So that's a matchup I'm very, very excited to see when – the Friars take a visit to Pfizer Forum. But again, <laughs> Theo John, he's, he's just a laughable guy in the big case. That you can't you can't think about him and not smile and have a quick chuckle. He is a force in the paint in every conceivable way in every direction. He's entertaining and uh we'll put on a show for you. Let's talk about uh, let's let's round out the starting five here. You want to talk about a show and entertainment value. There's one consistent way to do that. It's to look good while you play. You know, you got to have that swag. got to have uh, some, some good uniforms on. We're talking about this all year. The Friars finally going to break out those throwback uniforms. We haven't seen them this season. Man, I really hope so. Because let me tell you, last year we broke out those uniforms right at the start of conference play. And we went on a 12-6 to run to close out the season. And... I'm going to say it, even though it didn't happen because there was no tournament. We made the tournament last year. We easily made the tournament because of those jerseys. Nothing else, just because of the jerseys. <laughs> but we're we're seeing that kind of turning point in the season now, where it's like crunch time. You know, we're it's a little we're about midway through January. February's creeping up, and then March is coming right after that. This is that that point where you're you're digging through conference play. You need a boost. You need to look good while you're doing it. 
I, I think this is the perfect time. You got a road game, you come home, and then you got two more road games against the top two teams in the conference. Now is the time to break them out. Marquette, you know, you, you warm up in the jerseys, you know, get get loose with one game, you come home, and then you break them out again. Not to mention, you and I have both agreed that Marquette has the best jersey roster in the conference this season. I don't, I don't know about the best, but when it comes to new uniforms, they're some of the strongest in the league. Okay, fair. Then when it comes to their new uniforms, yeah. they have the best new uniforms. Yeah. If the Friars broke out the throwbacks against one of Marquette's new uniforms, forget it. That's forget nice it. Be- best right jersey there. matchup in the league. Yeah. I, I have to say, I don't think we're going to see the throwbacks. I don't want to disappoint people. But mm-hmm. Friars go on a road trip. Odds are the laundry people probably aren't bringing two different sets of uniforms. They may. But that's more luggage to carry, so they probably only brought one set. But the Friars drop this one. You come home after, you got a road trip Creighton and Villanova. You might see them then. If you don't see them against Marquette and this is a loss, look to those Creighton and Villanova games. They might break them out there. That's going to round out our starting five. Joe, what do you have coming off the bench? Yeah, so um, my off the bench, I'm going to keep it with this season and with this squad. It's going to be the late-game impact from Noah Horkler. Um, Personally, I think he deserves more minutes. Uh, We're going to take a a very focused look at the last two games and what he's done in the final minutes. Against Creighton, he came in, hit two free throws, and hit a very clutch layup to tie the game while the clock was ticking. Uh, He played very well, 12 points in limited 16 minutes of playing time. And then tonight, because it's still Sunday, or this morning, rather, against Xavier, he... Got five minutes of playing time, came in ice cold off the bench, nailed a three to to seal the seven point run, or excuse me, eleven point run, seven point lead for the Friars with a minute thirteen left. I think that he is getting comfortable in conference play. I think this is a different Noah Horkler than we've seen early on in the season. I think he's getting a little more comfortable in his role, and I think his minutes need to go up. I think some of the the veteran guys that Ed Cooley has turned to, i.e., Greg Gant have not really performed or met the expectations that were set at the beginning of the season. I think Noah Horkler has the potential to reach them, but it's very hard to tell when he's not logging significant minutes. So I think this is a great game where you can kind of experiment with him and get him going, especially with the matchups that Marquette has in the paint. So I'd like to see him. That's my off the bench. I like that. I like that a lot. I think... You're going to have uh, Dawson Garcia is going to be the four for Marquette. He's a, obviously a, a big guy, but they play him at the four because he's the scorer and he can score from the perimeter. Wouldn't hate the matchup with Horkler on him. Horkler's obviously way smaller, but he's a freshman. He's a smaller guy. It makes things easier for Horkler on defense. And it's going to give an opportunity to match that scoring at the other end of the floor. I like this a lot. I'm going to go for my off the bench. We're keeping it keeping it short here. Friars, 3-11 and all-time at Marquette. But those three wins have come in the last four games. The Friars have played at Marquette. They're 3-1 and there over the last four years. They had a one-point victory there in 2017, a two-point victory there in 2018, a 11-point loss in 2019. We'll forget about that one. And then last year... <laughs> Sent it to overtime, win by one. A.J. Reeves with the heroics in that one. Friars have found a little bit of magic there recently. It's a tough place to play. Obviously, you talk to Wisconsin. Nobody wants to go up to Marquette because that's a really tough place. But the Friars, they might be working with something here. They they might have overcome their whoops, their, their yips playing in that building. Let's make some predictions and talk about the X factors. I'll I'll let you round it out, Joe. I'll, I'll go first for this section. I'm gonna say the X factor is AJ Reeves. He played incredibly well last year out at Marquette. He's the guy that hit the shot to send the game to overtime, and he's put together a really solid four-game stretch. He had some of his rough moments against Xavier. He had some he had some layups that missed the rim. His his shooting inside was not what you want it to be, but he's had at least nine points in each of the last four games. He's hit threes in all of them, and I think he's playing with more confidence. Definitely a different player than you saw early in the season. You know Duke's going to play well. You know Watson's going to play well. If Reeves is that third guy, he is the X factor, and 
he does give you that extra thing, that extra oomph you need for games like this. I think he's the X factor. I think he's going to be in double digit points. I'm going to take the Friars. Right, seventy four sixty nine is what I've got written down. I think it's going to be close. Maybe not a one possession game. Let's let's hope it isn't because the Friars have played too many of those this year. I think the Friars win with just a little bit of comfort, and uh, they're able to hold Marquette under seventy points. Joe, what about you? I agree. Um, I think Reeves is going to provide a scoring punch that is desperately needed. He is the third leg of the three headed monster, or the third head of the three headed monster. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, my X factor is going to be David Duke. Um, so, for comparison, at this point last season, Duke's 36-point performance at Creighton was erased, and we saw nothing of that caliber, really, for the remainder of the season for him. But he was a sophomore, so, you know, he's a, a junior now. And this 30-point performance comes off of plenty, and I mean plenty of double-digit performances in the 20s and in the high teens. So... He's starting, he's starting to catch fire a little bit. This is his team. He knows it's his team. I think this is a great, great opportunity. I have. I think he's favored over every other guard uh, on the court. Forget Marquette on the court this game. He's the most experienced backcourt player in this game. I think David Duke's the X factor. I think uh, I'm, I'm sure he feels slighted that his 30-point performance was erased today at Xavier. I think he's going to come back with a vengeance. I'm expecting him to go off again. My final score, 77-65. I think the Friars take this one easily. Uh, Well, not easily. I think it'll be a rock fight throughout most of the first half. I think we'll pull away in the second half. I think it's going to come down to coaching. Um, I don't think Steve Wojciechowski is good enough of a coach to outcoach Ed Cooley at this point in the season with each respective roster. That's just what it comes down to. Wojo relied on Marcus Howard for a couple of wins over Ed Cooley in the past couple of years, but he does not have that player this year. So, All right. Well, yeah. you heard it from us. We're both optimistic, predicting the Friars' victory in the back the back leg of this road trip. Friars travel to Marquette. will play at Pfizer Forum in the late slot, 9 p.m. Tuesday night. That game will be, I believe, on Fox Sports 1. So make sure to watch that and then come back here Follow us on Twitter at the Flex Hoops. Follow us wherever you're listening to this because we will have a post game episode right after that one. Of course, you're not going to want to miss it, win or lose. We will be here, so come back and listen. For Joe Howie, I am Matt St. Jean, and thank you for listening. Go Friars. <laughs>